In this video, we're looking at what we think is one of the easiest house plants in terms of care, and we also think it's a wonderful looking plant. It's a succulent, and it's a Warthia cooperi, and this particular one is OB1. If you've got a favourite indoor plant that you think is really easy care, mention it in the comments. But here we go with OB1 and how to grow it. Yeah, the beauty of some of these Cooper eyes, and particularly the modern ones, is what you really look for is your nice clear lines. And you can get these lines these days in purple, dark brown, almost black. These are like dark green ones. And they're far more superior than some of the older cultivars and forms. Of all the succulents, are Hawarthias the easiest to grow as indoor plants? Well, I think it is actually because they really like low light, around about 70 odd percent, you know, shade they would like, so not direct sunlight. And that gives them this beautiful clear green. If you put these out in the sun, they actually go a brownie colour and they're not nearly so attractive. So they always look much, much better in shaded positions, which makes them really an ideal indoor plant. So can we have a look at how to pot one of these and the sort of pots that people can use to grow these indoors? Yeah, I've picked out a couple of nice pots, John. Um, look, I have here, we have, first off, we can get these these days. These are Japanese style pots based on a genuine ceramic Japanese pot. Notice the big holes, drainage holes, air goes in around here and it comes through. These are beautifully designed pots. Uh, now, you can get these in several sizes, so you can actually take your choices. This is um, a pretty famous potter called Jamie Kim from Korea. I really fell in love with his pots. They're Raku fired, so they breathe. They have a lot of breathing in them and not glazed on the inside, so the water drains away from them and helps the plants dry out. But he is particularly noted for the most exquisite glazes on these Raku pots. He's a, he's a really, really good potter. And you know, each bottom is different. You, know, you can have that sort of style on the bottom there, still allowing the air through, big hole. But look at that gold, red, crackle glaze. Absolutely superb pots. It's, I've never seen pots like this for plants. So no matter which pots we're using, potting mix is the next most important thing. So what are we using? Okay, what we've got here is we're using our normal soil mix, but we've added in here perlite, the white ones here, and pumice. Now both of these are reasonably available. You can also use scoria, which is actually more available. We mix that in with the, our soil as well. Either one. But the main thing you really want with Hawarthia is they need good air around the roots, and that really helps them grow. So not a heavy mix, one that drains out really well. If you do a mix like this, it generally has about 40 to 50% porosity, which means air, it holds it. We've talked about this before, but that's all you need for Hawarthias. Well, let's take one of these little beauties and, right. uh, and pot it up. All right, John, what we'll do is I think we'll, we'll use, which one would you like to try? Oh, look. I think this one here is pretty nice. They're both okay. nice, whatever you think. They're hard, they're hard, it's hard to choose, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, little disc covers up the big hole in the bottom. About half full. Now, ooh, pardon me, a little bit of fertilizer here. And can you tell us about the fertilizer? It's around about 50% dolomite line. Uh, and there's a soft nitrogen slow release in here, that's the little white bits, and the other one is an Osmocote blend, which we generally prefer to get the one with the minerals in. So, so that's it's Osmocote fully complete. Plus. Yes, plus, that's it. Yeah, okay. Very good. And yeah. I, I prefer that one. Now with these, we'll get, I think the middle one, it's a really good looking one. Okay, getting these out of here, squeeze them. And it should lift out quite easily. There we are, look at that. And you see, quite dry. Just tease it up a little bit. Let's get it in here. Try not to do too much disturbing. Tuck it in a little bit. Now, 
make sure it's in central. Just ease your plant over a little bit, pour a bit in. Go around, lift up the leaves so you don't damage the leaves. Firm it down with your thumb. That's going to be an old leaf. He comes off. Now, what sort of topping would you like to see on this, John? Well, look, whatever you think is going to look good. Okay, right? we'll go classic Japanese. Okay. Classic Japanese? Yep, which is decomposed granite. This okay. is what they really like. Or you can use Akadama. That's another thing you can use. This is, um, you can use coarse Akadama, like this one. All right, that gets the air around the leaves. That gives the airflow around the leaves. That can be mixed with your mixer, it breaks down eventually. But the granite's more longer lived. And we'll use that one. A little bit more. And I'm inclined to just overfill it a little bit because don't forget, this does sink down a little bit eventually. Now to finish this off, to smooth it off, give you a little tap. There we go. Okay, so we've got this wonderful plant at home. It's indoors. It's not getting any direct sun. How do we water it? How often do we water it? Okay, best thing is, is this is reasonably dry mix. Learn what the weight of it is. And you can actually dip this into a bowl of water you know, like one of these full of water. Leave it in there for 10 minutes. Imagine that's water. Leave it in there for 10 minutes. The water level will come up to here. 10 minutes, it'll percolate up and you don't have to wet the top. Take it out and drain it. That's all you need to do. And so every time it's dry, water it. So you can do that by weight, but if you were sort of guessing time-wise, Maybe in winter, once every three to four weeks. Now, if it happens to be inside, it'll be a warmer environment, remember. So two to three weeks maybe in winter, and maybe once a week with that well-drained mix in summer would be all that you need. Because inside a house, it's pretty dry. It'll evaporate more quickly. If you're using a heavier mix, you're not going to water it nearly so often? Not as much, because it holds more water okay. and less air. Fertilise? How often? Maybe once a year what you do is you get a little bit of fertiliser and you dribble it in around here, stir it in with your mix and it will disappear into your mix. About once a year. These actually really like to grow, they do grow through summer but they're sort of autumn and spring growing. So they generally have a rest over the summer period, they're summer dormant and they're much slower growing in winter. So you want to keep the water back a little bit in winter. Let them dry out a bit more, often. And you're not going to water these from above? I would prefer you don't. It, it, you'll get away with it, but if you really want it to live well, dunk it in up to here, halfway up your pot. Give it 10 minutes soak in there and let it dry. Any other tips for growing these ones indoors? Not really. That's all they need. Not direct sunlight. Don't put them in the window because the wind the heat from the window coming direct sunlight will fry them, particularly if they've been in real shade. And these will look absolutely superb looking through the light, towards the light, with all the little windows in them. And there are many other forms of uh, Hawthias that have interesting windows, So, and all of them would be suitable for indoor plants. And how often would you need to repot that plant? Look, I'd actually leave him in there for another three years. He will end up with some babies around him, like, th like this one here, many babies, and then you break him up and divide him and repot him. He will end up, this, that's probably a five or six year old plant, this one. So it's got a lot, this is a real pupper, many, many pups. These are a bit slower pupping, these ones. So we just divide those in the way that we looked at in the other video. Yeah, yeah that's exactly it, yeah, definitely. Well, there we go. Wonderful indoor plant, really easy care. And they, you don't have to water them much and low light. Ideal for low light situations in your house. So if you went away for a month? It's still looking great when you get home. You just need to water just it when you get back. Give it a good drink when you get back. Don't over fertilize it. No, I don't think so. 
So there we go. A wonderful indoor plant, easy care, fascinating. You can get these Hawarthias in a whole range of forms. We do like the Cooper Eyes, and you can get those in a range of colours, as James, James said. We'd have 30 or 40 varieties of Cooper Eyes, different Cooper Eyes here. There we go. The pots, well, it depends how much you want to spend. These Jamie King pots. They're, they're not cheap. They're, they're really not cheap. They cost a lot in crab. They're generally about $120, $130 a thing. But it's actually a work of art. So in my eyes, they're worth it. And if you don't have that sort of money to spend, you can you always can put them into a plain black pot, but it's a nice shape. That in, sort of thing. Yep. Cost you? Oh, $1.50, $2 a pot. They're very high quality plastic, really good plastic, these ones. It's not a cheap pot. This this pot here, that's a you know a 15 cent pot or 20 cent pot. You know, this is a whole different game. And can we have a quick look at the drainage in that one? Yeah. Okay, so we can see it's got great drainage holes. You'd and well made, lifted up, air, air spaces in going through here. So it's got all the right requirements for Hawarthia. The Japanese have designed these really for orchids or Hawarthia. The, these are originally, traditionally, many, many years ago, orchid pots. Because Japan, Korea, they really like the uh, growing the wild native orchids in really well-drained mixes. And they designed these pots for that purpose. And it just so happens they suit Hawarthias with good deep roots and air. So there we go. Hawarthia cooperi OB1. An absolutely wonderful little indoor plant. Especially in a Jamie King pot. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for regular updates on indoor plants, a whole range of other succulents and general gardening matters. Of all the succulents, are Hawarthias the easiest to grow as indoor plants?